Hey guys, Burton from Addo Games here, and I'm continuing the tutorial on how we uh, go about rigging. And this is part of the series on just our, our creative workflow. So we have, uh, in our last one, if we turn shading and x-ray joints on, I've actually got the joints hidden as well. Uh, you can see our skeletal rig that we've got. It's currently not influencing the mesh at all because we can still move our mesh in object selection mode and also moving there we go also moving this has no no effect on the mesh whatsoever um, there's one thing that i did do in this um, before i started this tutorial from the last one and that was i actually separated this shell this point upwards of here um, what i did was i selected this edge loop and then I went to um, shift and right click and I detached the components. And what that allowed me to do was make this, it basically doubled the edges here and it gave one, a new edge along here and a new edge for this guy down to here. And so now what we have is, is a separate piece that is flush against the other one. Um, you could probably even move it up a little bit so that it's seated inside of it if you, if you felt like there would be anything. We, we definitely aren't affecting its um, scale. So we're not affecting like how closely it sits here. But um, anyway, uh, I'll exp I can explain why I'm doing that. Uh, the first thing we can do is take a look at how we want this guy to move with respect to these three joints. And um, all of these uh, joints are going to have an influence on different parts of this robot. Um, we, for our characters, we like to have them in a bound in a very rigid manner. Uh, we can't use in uh, Maya, there is a uh, rigid binding um, uh, property, but I'm pretty sure, uh, to the best of my understanding, that that actually won't come out in a show into Unity. So we have to use smooth bind, and we sort of paint our weights, uh, which I'll explain in just a moment, in a very rigid looking way, or a way that gives us a very rigid result. Um, we, we don't want our characters to end up with a, let's see if I get into vertex mode, we don't want them to, it's very easy, once you have a skeleton, it's very easy to, to select um, the skeleton and not your mesh. So I'm going to turn off joint selection mode. Anyway, if I select our verts, we don't want our characters to have this sort of like twisty, like bendy, like stretching sort of uh, motion. We, we like to think of it as like, you know, a piece of steel. A piece of steel moves up and down and left and right. It doesn't get bigger and smaller. Um, so we won't, we won't be doing any sort of like uh, soft binding or soft painting of our weights. And uh, at this point, let's go ahead and bind our mesh to our skeleton. And we're going to do that by selecting, let's turn this uh, mode back on so that we actually can select the skeleton. The first thing we want to select is our mesh. The second thing we want to do by holding shift and selecting it is our skeleton and that'll turn the skeleton green and the other things white <clears throat> now remember this is even though i detached these components these are still the same mesh so this is part of the selection too they just happen there happens to be two sets of edges along this one seam here and that's so that we can animate it a little better um, so at this point in your animation menu which is f2 uh, your animation subset menu you're going to go to bind and let's just take a look at the options for smooth bind by hitting the box to the right of the word of uh, the term smooth bind it's going to bring up the options and when you bind objects in a 3d program you're binding a mesh to a series one or more joints and if you have more than one joint they're going to get uh, different amounts of weighting applied to them so each joint will have so much weighting on this vertice while this one um, with the default settings it's going to be based on distance here this is the setting here um, you're going to get different influences based on how far away things are so this joint may not have as much sway on this vertice as this one would because it's closer and uh, when you first bind, you're going to get results that you did not want. And you have to go in and correct that using a tool called Paint Weights. And so we're going to go ahead and we've got to select these again. 
first the mesh and then the joint hierarchy. And then we're going to just hit bind skin. It's going to close that menu out for us. And now when we select this mesh in object mode, you'll notice that we don't have our manipulator tools available to us. They're grayed out. And that's because this mesh now controls the manipulation of this. It's bound to it. Uh, but what you'll see as you if, as you go down, I've got the outliner open over here, so you can see me selecting through the hierarchy. Uh, I could also select them over here in the outliner. Um, you'll see as you go down, you get different weights, different amounts of weighting painted, and you get start getting some really finicky or funny results, peculiar. So what we have to do is we have to use the paint weights tool to correct that, and so. What we're going to do is, I'll just go ahead and talk about how we're going to distribute this. We've got three joints. Like I said, we don't mess with really painting. Basically, our weights are always 100% or nothing. So a joint's either going to get all of the weights for a particular vertice painted on it or none of them. And so um, we're going to get our first one, our root joint here, is going to be responsible for all of these guys. So when this joint right in here moves, all of this is going to move. And let's look at our next guy. The second joint here is going to be the base of the turret. So I'm going to use this mesh right here, which we have separated now from this mesh. He's going to get all of this guy. So we can have a recoil that's, that comes in like this, separate from this guy. And then the rest of them or all this last mesh and then they're going to be able to move independently too. They'll just move, this will be the extreme extreme down that it will get to move because there's nothing, there's no overlap, there's nothing coming back in here. Um, so we can, so it can recoil in here and then this part can recoil in here, in this far. We can get a nice little two-stage look and these pieces can move independently of one another. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to come back in here to the main mesh and the face selection mode. So I'm just hitting, uh, with the object select, I'm just hitting right click and going down to face. Uh, double clicking, it selects all of the connected faces and then I'll need to select everything else. And you just want to make sure you have everything. There's nothing that you missed that pertains to the joint you're working on. So the first one we're going to work on is this root one. And now with all this selected, you can hit Shift I, and that will isolate those faces. Uh, drop into object mode, deselect it. Now reselect the object in object mode without the other mode that we dropped out of had the faces selected. Um, so now with just this, we can enter the paint weights tool, which you can find in the edit smooth skin, paint weights, it's skin, edit smooth skin and paint weights tool. When you open that, you should have, if you don't see a tool settings pop up, you need to open it. You can open it either here, or you can open it in the display UI tool settings. And it brings it up over here. I'm gonna just switch to perspective so we don't have the outliner there too. Because this basically shows what we, we were interested in the outliner anyway. And so now, um, there's the, I think the default setting is this use color ramp. I, I don't, that particularly doesn't re resonate with me as much as the black and white, so I turn it off, and so I just get black and white. So you can kind of see this ghostly gray here, and then there's black up here. And that's based on the joint that I have selected right here in this tool. Um, what we want to do, what I was saying was we want to have the root affect all of this. So what we need to do, let's just start at the root. We can see this is not pure white. Um, Pure white represents full influence, and black represents no influence. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the root. I'm going to use the replace here. Um, and this tool, let me just go through and explain how to use this tool. If you're not using it like I'm using it, like maybe you have a character that's um, organic and it needs to move in a very, you know, the skin stretches and the elbow bends and things like that. That's not very, um, you know, it's not made of, of, of metal or something. Um, you can use this tool just like you would almost like a Photoshop tool. Um, you can choose a value and the opacity to paint. So this this would paint with 6.6% opacity black. So I can come in here and continue to click on this area and get it darker and darker. 
um, you can hold down the B key and drag out here and you can make this brush bigger or smaller and so you can just literally just kind of drag through here and get it darker and then come back for another pass and get it darker again and this is because I only I don't have full opacity if I have full opacity wherever it's gonna hit it's gonna turn you can see it's very it's very abrupt you have to paint the influence on each vertice in our case the way we do it with the full rigid sort of bind we're actually we're not even going to use this paint tool at all we're going to use a flood fill which is this option right here and we're going to hit we're on the root we want one whole value we want pure white we want a uh, one opacity so just hit it and it goes full white next thing we need to do is we need to look at our other um, joints and see if they have any weights painted on these guys Usually when you flood something with one, the other guy shouldn't be anything other than zero, but just in case you need to go through each one. So we've done this one at one. This guy's value needs to be zero. Let's flood it. And this one, flood it. And now we're done with this top head part. So I'm going to hit the Q key and drop out of there. And with nothing selected, I'm going to hit Shift I again. It's going to drop me out of the isolate perspective mode. And now we need to work on our other two pieces, our other two joints. Okay, so I'm going to select this shell. I'm going to hit Shift-I. And the reason why I'm hitting Shift-I to isolate is it just allows me to kind of cheat and I can flood fill the mesh, even though it's the full mesh is all of these pieces. So I'm going to drop back out of here. Even though the full mesh when I select is all these pieces, the paint weights tool will only affect the things that are visible in the viewport. So if I select this face right here and I just paint on these guys, it's going to only affect these four faces and not the rest of it, which is kind of cool. It's kind of a little cheat that I learned uh, through trial and error. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to hit Shift I. I'm going to deselect it, reselect it in object mode, paint weights. Um, you can see we've got a little bit on the turret tip. We don't want any. We want it all on the turret base, any on the root, quite a bit. And now we want to just make sure that's full white. If you ever do all of it zero, you're gonna, probably going to see these. Let's just see if it works. It's kind of scary when it happens, but sometimes you can get all of the, the vertices will just like disappear because nothing has any weights. And it will, I don't know, the verts just kind of fly off into space or have trouble drawing. Um, so we're done with that piece. I'm going to deselect it. Shift I. Let's go into face mode and select this bottom guy. Shift I. Deselect back into object mode. Enter the paint weights tool. Root. Zero. Turret base. Zero. Turret tip. Full. Full one. And really that's all there is to it i mean this is a really simple model we have um, more much more complex models but this guy is um was a good illustration to show you guys how this works so we have root root's going to be the whole guy so if he needs to like drop his head down he's going to be able to do that he needs to bring this piece up it's going to bring up this part too because it's a child this is a child joint that we did you can kind of tell because of the directions here this is just this is an arrow pointing downward to a child so we can have this going up and then this guy can sort of stall and come up as well so he can kind of come up in two stages during his animation and then he can you know drop down and, and fire so this can be a kind of cool wind-up where half of the wind-up is through this joint and then the rest of it is through here or something. Or maybe, you know, a third of it's through here and, a, and the rest, two-thirds of it's through here. But um, that's pretty much it. Um, now it's time for, the, for me to uh, save this and the animator will, um, our artist will come in here and he will paint influences on it and or not paint influences he will do the animations and I will uh, pick up the tutorial series there if you guys have any questions please let me know uh, feel free to subscribe uh, I'm usually always working and I'm usually always working in unity so 
hit me up and let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what you'd like to see if I missed anything. Um, one more thing, if I haven't mentioned it before, this is not the time where you would want to be spamming the delete history. Uh, I never use that once I get this um, into it when you start binding because um, I'll go ahead and show you, but if I hit delete history, you'll see that now I can move the mesh and he's not bound to the skeleton anymore. So you definitely don't want to do that. Um, so anyway, let me know if you guys need any help. Thanks so much.